Hey everyone, welcome to Homes for Beginners where I show you how to do repairs around the house yourself. In this video here I'll be showing you how to mark the holes in your sill plate for anchor bolts. As you can see we're building a garage. The concrete pad was poured and the anchor bolts were added in before the concrete pad surface was finished. It can be tricky getting these holes in the exact location if this is something you're new to. First is ensuring all those anchor bolts are straight. These aren't always installed straight. If they're not straightened they can throw off your hole alignment. A nylon faced hammer is recommended. This will not damage the threads. Another option is installing a nut, then hammering the anchor over plumb. Be careful when doing this. If the anchor bolts are too close to the edge, you do risk breaking a piece out of the concrete. Next was cutting the sill plate to length, which you can see has already been done here, and the door opening was already marked out. The walls which run the full length will be done first. It's important to use pressure treated wood for the sill plate as it has protection against the moisture when it's lower to the ground and close to the concrete. Marking out the anchor points is the first step before marking out your studs. Once you know where those anchor points are located, this will help make any adjustments as needed to your studs. The sill plate is placed next to the anchor bolts. The section before the door is even with the front of the pad and the section after the door is even with the back of the pad. Measurements and adjustments are taken from the edge of the pad ensuring the plate runs parallel with the edge of the pad. Using a combination square, mark out each side of the anchor bolt. I find this is the most accurate way. When I'm drilling a hole, I'll know exactly where that hole is and if it's in the correct location. For the depth from the edge, again using the combination square, set the depth from the edge of the pad to the outside edge of the anchor bolt. Then you continue to mark them out on the sill plate. After that is determining the centers between the two lines, then marking over the center from the outer edge reference. This can be done on any sized anchor bolt. As for drilling, here I'm using my OEM Tools 20 volt lithium ion brushless quarter inch impact driver. Variable speed, 0 to 3000 RPM, 300 foot pounds of nut busting power, and 260 foot pounds of tightening torque. The quarter inch quick release makes it a breeze switching between those appropriate size drill bits or driver tips. The anchor bolts are half inch but I am using 5 8 spade bit instead. It's slightly larger and this will make up for any problems where something doesn't align and it gives me a little extra movement so everything is properly aligned so that wall is straight. The slightly oversized hole will be covered with larger washers that will have no problem keeping everything in place. After laying out my studs, I'll show you in a moment how to go about laying out a stud which falls on top of an anchor bolt. Now for a close-up of the same process, this time perpendicular to an exterior wall instead of working on the edge of the pad. Again, the board is ran parallel with the edge of the pad. If it's on an angle, it may throw the position off for the marks of the bolts. Next is marking out the edges of the anchor bolts using the combination square. Finally setting the depth of the combination square for each bolt and then transferring them over to the plate. Then is marking out the center points for drilling. The holes are then drilled with the appropriate size. When done, as you can see it's a perfect fit. As for installing a stud over an anchor bolt location, some notch it out and leave it as is but this isn't fully structural. The bottom of the stud is notched out and this will face the inside of the building. The notch is high enough where I'm able to slip on a nut. An additional stud is then cut. These two studs are then nailed together every 24 inches. The nails are installed on an angle as they are 3.5 inches in length and they would come out on the other side otherwise. Always make sure you crown your studs in the same direction. The wood isn't always straight and if it was, it'll bow or warp on its own as it isn't always properly kiln dried from the lumber yard. I'm a big fan of using these clamps to pull the boards into place. This is the best way to achieve a flush wall so no studs interfere with any wall coverings. 
I've already nailed down the cell plate, so next is working with the first section of the top plate. The doubled up studs have four nails in total, two in each board, just like the rest of the studs. Once done, here you can see that notch when the wall is in place. I will be installing these plates when the garage is closed in, just so they're not exposed to the weather so much. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home DIY videos. Thank you for watching.